Hi everyone! Welcome to Ask a Puppy Trainer, episode 101. I missed the 100. You missed the 100, yeah. Well, I had COVID, so... That's what I, <laughs> I don't think you wanted me here, trust I thought, me. I thought you just skipped out. No, oh, I, I did, because I had COVID. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have this Layla, is Layla. as well. well. We'll see how long she Very lasts. Sweet. She's so sweet and wiggly. And they told us that she still has to pee, so... <laughs> I hope she doesn't pee on us. They like to throw us surprises. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Okay. Our first question from Judy Patton. Crying. Our puppies cry. Our puppy cries when we put her in the house. How long do we let her cry? Mm, so put her in the house. This is a really common question. I'm, Maybe I'm they mean crate. House is in crate. That's kind of what we're going to assume because we call our crates house. So if you watch any of our videos, that's also what we call it in those videos. Um, it really just depends. There are things you can do to help your puppy settle down a little bit quicker, like mm -hmm. the puppy meditation routine, which is getting them to sit before going in, mm -hmm. have them go in, waiting a couple seconds, have them come out with the heel, and then basically not heel. Well, not heel. Let's not go. Heel. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, something get them to follow you. And again, mm -hmm. if you check out our online school, that's a really good really asset to find a whole bunch of information on all the different techniques that we use. Puppy meditation, there's a huge video that Bethany made specifically about it. Yeah. So uh, you can go to thepuppycademy.com and then check out our online school. It's a little banner on the top. And it's a really, really great knowledge or a really great well of information for any new puppy. Sorry, I got a puppy on my lap and I'm, I'm moving all around. Will you I, I was also gonna I was also around. gonna say everything he said, yes, but then it some basic things could really help. Like something as simple as covering the crate kind of set up the room like you would put a baby to sleep. A white noise machine, um, the only difference would be with, with a baby, you're not gonna play yeah, like a sitcom. And <laughs> you have no patience for the wiggly ones. Nope. Um, like a sitcom I in the background. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank goodness. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so you can cover the crate, play a white noise machine or a loud fan or humidifier or something like that. And then also play some sort of talk radio or a sitcom, you know, playing over and over in the background. I know a lot of uh, advice online is always like play smooth jazz, but the, the problem is when you have a dog that's already really whining, smooth jazz doesn't block any outside noises out. So have your white noise machine to block out the outside noises and then just play, you know, talking and play us <laughs> if you want to for a half an hour um, just to uh, make the puppy not feel so alone. So those are a few tricks. Those are also on my online or on my my online school. Did you hear that? That's also on my online school. I don't anymore. <laughs> on our so online school. Technical difficulties with my mic. Trying to get his mic working. We've been having issues with mics for forever. Forever. Yeah, I don't think it ever stopped. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how it works out. All right. So anyway, Judy, hopefully uh, that's going to kind of get you over over the curve. Try those things and then come back to us next week and we can see what the result was because we can give you a bunch of other stuff, but those are kind of the basics to try. And to answer your direct question of how long do you wait, um, oh. honestly, it really just depends. I'll wait yeah. sometimes hours for our dogs and every day that you do it, every week that you do it gets easier and it easier. It should get easier and yes, easier. it's supposed to get easier and easier until eventually you have a dog that will maybe go in there whine for a few minutes and then stop. If your dog is whining for like 15, 20 minutes, that's incredibly common. That's not bad at all. If your dog is whining for two and a half, three hours, okay. It's a little to, different. Try what Bethany just said and yeah. check back in with us. Did you do a read of Bethany's microphone? Uh-oh. We hear you kind of, it's just echoey. You're echoey. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't move as easily anymore. You need the mic. Okay, no, my microphone. Okay, so Sims, for Disney Legacy says, how can I teach my cockapoo, five months old, not to eat everything he can find? He's good with things inside, um, but I want him to drop stuff, even if there's a distance between us. How can I teach him? Uh, okay, so first of all, the whole distance thing, if you can tell your dog to drop a chicken bone or a delicious stick from across the yard or the park, if you can say drop it and your dog drops it, uh, amazing. We but, wanna hire you as a dog trainer. Yeah, that is super advanced work. Generally, for that kind of stuff, it's a no. Like, you need to have a good, solid no. Now, I'm not saying don't work on your drop it. You should. There's a number of ways to work on drop it. But the, the, I just want to put expectations in, 
to check a little bit when it when it comes to that. I would also probably have a long lead on my dog anywhere we go if I know that they're picking Especially things up. Especially a puppy, yeah. Yeah, five month old puppy. You Even in the yard. Them, you have a leash on them all the time, period. Yeah. And if I'm in the backyard and I want to give them a little bit more freedom to roam around. And make a mistake. Yes, I'll give a 20 foot long lead and maybe I'll only give them 10 feet of that. Maybe I only give them eight feet of it. But when I start seeing them go towards things where there might be a bad item, I'm either I'm already recalling them away from it. Recall is come, come is recall. It's the same thing with our relationship building exercise, which mm -hmm. is name, come, move backwards, mm -hmm. create a little bit of leash tension, not a lot. You're not pulling in the elbow. Your body's doing all the work of moving. And when your puppy looks to you, good. Try to entice them to come with the food. When they start running, relieve that leash pressure. The big thing I would say is if your dog is picking up a lot of things outside, then five months old, maybe it's time to move to something that gives you head control mm -hmm. so you can prevent the constant sniffing that sometimes a harness will accidentally encourage. Yeah. Now, if you have tons of food drive, you can combat that with food drive. But if you don't have that and you don't know how to shape it or want to shape it, I totally understand. Get something with head control. A There's different a lot of great tools out there. And if you are going to do that, I got to say this because I already mentioned long lead. Do not put a long leash on that. Yeah, don't don't get like a gentle leader and put a long lead on a gentle leader. That's Good different. We don't want uh, that. Yeah, that's different. But anyway, when you're walking and your dog does pick something up, you know, kind of assess it. If it's a leaf, you know, let him eat it. Let him build some immunity up. If it's something that he really shouldn't have and if he's really gunning, you know, for things, um, you're just going to do pressure up up on the leash. If you have head control, wait the puppy out. And as soon as you don't lift him off the ground, it's just a little bit of pressure up in the air. As soon as he gets bored and finally spits it out, uh, good food food and then come food and if you really want to work on that you leave the stick the object the piece of cat poo whatever it is <laughs> right Ooh, there and you walk by it several times while doing food work which i hope you're doing in the house and in the yard and in other areas otherwise this won't work on a walk you actually proof that distraction on the ground. Don't just say no and let it go. Because you're asking me, how do I get more control over this? You really work each problem. And, and so you'll find cat poop. <laughs> uh, the reason I thought of cat poop is because of my German Shepherd Dakota. Recently, we have a cat going in the yard. And we have peacock poop. It's been here. an issue. Ugh. That's our thing. Peacock poop. Peacock. That's great. See, everybody's got some poop issue. And so anyway, you got you got to work on those things specifically. But I, I got to say this. Do not, unless it's dangerous, do, everybody, stop pulling stuff out of your dog's mouths like crazy mm -hmm. because you create the franticness. Once they figure that out, you create more franticness to grab things and, and then they'll start to, Ooh. and then they'll start to swallow them. Exactly. Yeah. And so unless it's downright dangerous, do not grab things out of the mouth, use the leash, or if it's just a leaf, let them eat the leaf. I had a client one time that I went to their house and they told me if my dog picks something up, they swallow it instantaneously. I said, show me. The dog picked up a button, a little button. She ran to the dog like it was the scariest possible thing. The button was pretty bad. And the dog looked at her, I could see it smile practically and then swallow it knowing the mom was going to try to take it out of its mouth. It became a game. And yeah. when you frantically move to your dog, it becomes the game of how quickly can I swallow it or get it away from them. And yeah. the other side of it is they could start trying to bite you. Yeah, they start guarding. They kind of value to it. They start guarding. Yeah. And puppies, a five month old puppy will start oh. guarding. So just a warning, everybody. Okay, we're going to move on. Um, do Wellness says. Uh, current student. Okay. Goose says... Uh, oh, Goose. Goose said their lesson. <laughs> that's, so, that's a cute name for, for a dog. It's a little pity. Oh, that's funny. I worked with a doby named Goose. It's like mm -hmm. an appropriate name for like those types of breeds. Yep. Can I have extra treats at school tomorrow? <laughs> Does she mean bring them? Sure. <laughs> uh, let's go from the other side. Um, maximum time to walk four-month-old pity. Roddy Mix, is it five minutes for... Oh, five minutes for every one month of age. No, in our lesson we talked about this as well. And I'll still give the answer even though we talked about it in our lesson. Uh, most young puppies, even a four month old puppy, if they get out and they're walking on a training tool or even off a training tool, they might only last 10, 15 minutes of giving you focus in a controlled environment before you're gonna lose focus. And then uh, Goose in particular was jumping up, nipping at her pants, mm -hmm. nipping at her bum, just because the puppy was overexcited, overstimulated. And what that means is, they're taking all of this information, all this stimulus in at rapid speed, and it creates overstimulation. So a dog that could normally walk in your living room, your backyard, your front yard, perfectly next to you for food, 
they lose all interest in food. You have to work them below threshold. And your threshold is basically the mental wall that they have in their brain that when you go outside, they're over threshold. They can't focus on, I gotta lean into when I talk, I just realized that Ricky's giving me a look. When you go outside, hey, you, you get back here. <laughs> when you go outside, you have to work under threshold, which means that you're helping the brain understand to focus on you. If you see dogs, you see people and they're showing energy towards your dog, your dog is over threshold. So try the backyard, try the front yard, try the sidewalk in front of your house. And when you see distractions coming, move to the side, move away from them. So you're helping them stay below threshold, depending on the area that you're training in. Um, I'd just like to say that I don't know where you got your five month, five minutes for every one month of age, but that's not bad. That's actually kind of really not a bad um, parameter. You hush up, because we because because we I disagree because we disagree on this. Um, uh, so what was I saying before you interrupted me? I have oh, the microphone. Go away. I didn't agree. Wait, wait, wait. So, so, so here's the thing. If you have a cockapoo or, or, oh, I can't say a Maltese because Happy was a maniac, my dog. Okay, so it depends on the puppy. In my personal experience, uh, it really does just depend on the dog and Thank how... You and how you're training it. A Roddy mix might have quite a bit of energy between the five and six month mark. I would just mix up what you're doing. You can't do the same thing for 20 minutes. You don't wanna go for a 20 minute walk. You wanna do a five minute warm up of place come, place come, place come. Then do your front door threshold. Then work in front of your home or apartment building. Turn, stop and sit for 10 minutes. Then play a few minutes of tug and drop it and calm your puppy back down if needed before putting them back in crate. So when I look at a 20 minute segment with a young puppy, if they need it, if they can do it, if and, and some puppies need longer sections of time, you can't drill the same thing for 20 minutes, but you can do a little bit of everything and they'll pass out. Some of them, that's what they need to actually truly rest for three hours in crate. And then other dogs, they have no attention span yet and they don't have um, a lot of energy. And so then you don't need that, you know, so you have to play around with it. I also try to think about a window of free time from being out of the crate before going back in. We always split it up into three parts, walk and play, a little bit of training, and then usually supervised separation. I won't go over the third part, but that walk and play, that's kind of what she's mentioning. Mm -hmm. That training is yeah. what she's mentioning. And by the way, training can be in these busier environments if your dog's ready for it. Yeah. But if I go on the sidewalk in front of my house and I expect my dog to heal next to me, there's no way it's going to happen. But if I do my Sit puppy break. come good come. food, puppy come good food, now my puppy's looking for me because I've added value to myself. Then it could be some let's go work, feel pressure, take a couple steps back, your puppy looks to the source of the pressure, you're holding food, let's go, they come towards you, they get the food, you move in the opposite I'm direction. Gonna, I'm going to make you back up. So what he, what he said first, that's golden. Like everybody needs to pay attention to that. Stop not walking your puppies outside. Well, wait a minute, did I say that right? Stop not going outside with your puppies. There we go. Go outside and do sit break. Come sit, come sit, turn, come sit in a space no bigger than this room. Like get your puppies outside five, 10, 15 minute increments and do what's easy for them in the house do it outside. Stop expecting heal or even let's go work for a four month old puppy That'd that's new. Top pressure work. Yeah, it's, it's too new to them, but don't make that, make that, uh, oh, what's wrong with me today? Don't make it to where you don't go outside at all, okay? I'm trying to work out the first sentence. Pick something simple and go outside and do it. It could be sit break for five minutes or come into a sit turn. And if you have a really, really easy puppy that's just kind of a lazy puppy, we have a puppy named Moose, he's just a big old dude. And he walks. <laughs> we need Moose in here. <laughs> he's huge. I think he's bigger than this couch. He's five months old. He's so big. But an easy puppy, you can, you can get away with a little bit more. Because I know yeah. a lot of you are watching and you might have a moose at home. You might. You might have yeah. a large bird and you, and you think loose. And you think something's wrong with your puppy. And no, embrace it. Yeah, love it. <laughs> love it, live it. Five, five minute increments and a break. <laughs> and then he'll go home and sleep for eight hours. Oh, God. I know. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's oh. a dream right there. <laughs> okay. Chris, because you work with difficult dogs <laughs> all day. All right. Chris uh, Starkweather says, hi, I've got two 
Siberian Huskies. Why? Why? <laughs> I'm, just ki- I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. Are they puppies? They're I'm not just real kidding. Puppies. One. Well, this is here's the why right here. I mean, seriously, Chris. One year and the other is five months. So yes, you have two puppies. Because you just have a very adolescent puppy. Yeah, genuinely, we or genuinely. Oh, generally, we say. Oh, uh, I know it's bad today. Generally, we I say. Mean. I know it really is that and a lack of sleep. <laughs> generally, we say that just for everybody, it's just like a general statement. Is when you get a puppy, wait till they're fully mature around the two-year mark before you get another one. Okay. Anyway, sorry. And really, really well trained. Well, you, and that's a lot to ask. I'm going to tell you this right now. Your older dog does not train the new dog that comes in your home. No. I, I have to say it. Everyone's no. thinking it right now. Well, if the dog's trained, they can train the new puppy. They can they help. give them some structure. They can help. help them a little bit. But it's your job to train the new puppy. It's your job to give the structure. You don't want your older dog correcting your younger puppy. It's huskies. And I know yeah. your older dog's probably corrected the younger puppy once or twice. That eventually builds resentment between the two dogs. Yep. So it's your job to bi- to build the boundaries. And when they're playing, you are going to get a couple little corrections in there. But that's when you start ending the play. Yeah. That's your older dog's way of being like, hey, dad, I need help. Get in here and help me out. And so, he's just being general for anybody. Who has, general. Yeah. But but Chris already screwed up. So let's see what you need. Okay. Oh. So. <laughs> All Man, right. We were just on fire. I know. Sorry, Chris. I have no filter. She, she will be here next week. No filter today. Okay. Y'all be sleeping. Can I train them to not try and escape their crates while I'm at work? Ooh, this is a tough one. Oh, that's they, just a husky question. They paw and chew and are barking and whining. Uh, I can work four hour shifts, but I'm always rushing home. They might hurt themselves. They go into their crates willingly, they wait till I, you know, invite them out. Some days are better than others. We are a very schedule-driven work and training, exercise and play regularly. Wow, uh, you, you have a chance, man. You got a chance. That's Chris. what I like to hear. This she is picked on you. This is the main issue I'm having. I need to not stress. <laughs> you got two husky puppies. Need to not stress. That was funny. I need to not stress and have to check the camera all the time. Yeah. Okay. So my first recommendation is to look into. Roughland, oh no, huskies. I was gonna say Roughland kennels. Roughland. They're it's tight. It depends on how big your huskies are. But you can get a big Roughland. They're just about five, six hundred bucks. But they're very narrow. Um, they're just they're okay. So there's Roughland kennels. They're meant for hunt, like hunting dogs who go traveling with their owners yeah. and be back in the truck bed. But they're incredibly sturdy, incredibly well built. They're a less expensive option versus impact crates. I honestly, with a husky. Personally, I would do impact crates. You're gonna kind of fall over when you see the price, but I'm telling you, yeah, it no, is it is a good investment. Let me it just put it to you that way. Ever and they'll last yeah. every dog you have from here yeah. until you die. And they have new ones now that actually do break down. You don't have to just put the big paneling up and yeah. So so that would at least I'm not saying that they won't scratch at it and maybe break a nail or something like that. But uh, wire crates are nothing. Normal plastic carrier crates, they are nothing. They just like, have welding for the wire crates and they'll break that welding very quickly. I walked in, we, there's a Husky we've worked with forever. See, I, I'm a bunny trail person today. Uh, she literally, I walked in, it took her forever to dealing with what you're dealing with. Took her forever. And I walked in on her the other day and she's just like gnawing on the side of the plastic and I not even trying to get out anymore. Well, she's enjoyed. She's just yeah, and she's bored. about one and a half and she's bored even though she's got plenty of exercise and mental work and accountability, all the things. And I'm like, "Oh my god, we've got to get you into um, a metal crate for it's your a, mother." It's a coping mechanism. Yeah. They're bored, they need something to do, they find something to do that takes up some time. And they do it until they break their teeth. But you can't give them a toy. It's dangerous mm-hmm. in the crate. Like, don't. Swallow yeah. Hazard. You don't want to do that. Right here, right now, that's with us. That swallowed a sponge two days ago with the owner. Mm. And it's still trying to pass it. Oh, fingers crossed. Okay, so let's actually get to helping this person. Um, I think we said one or two things to help them. I don't. I, th- no, I, don't I No, I don't think we helped them yet. You just ragged on them. I, okay, so first of all, I would like you to go to YouTube. And I want you to type in dog meditation. That ought to do it. Go to YouTube and type in dog meditation or dog meditation patterning. And you should see some crate video, like should pop up some crate videos of slow 
boring, meticulous crate training with another one-year-old German Shepherd happens to be by yours truly. And so that would be the first thing I would do. And, and what that is, is it's very boring. It's on leash. It's slip leash usually only. Um, even on your five month old, maybe do flat collar if they're not used to it. But you do the pause and they're ready to get out. Even though they're listening, they are ready to get out. And unless you think they're gonna pee all over the place, you're gonna go very calmly, let's go. Or maybe even just pat your leg, like very nonverbal, turn, pause again. Because they know you're gonna make them go back and crate. So if they're not dodging crate, they're ready to rush in. They don't even get to do that. You're gonna actually just use police pressure guidance. You're not gonna say no, sit down, bleh, get rid of all that. You are just gonna pressure them a little bit with, with leash. Something that has head control. With some, less, so I said slip Probably. leash, yeah. I'm, I'm here, so it I'm needs sorry. to be slip or, or flat collar maybe yep. for the five month old. And, and then you just pause. I don't even care about the sit. They just need to breathe. And you need to be able to inhale and exhale. Then say crate, they go in, pause. Don't be like crate down, crate. <gasps> Everybody breathe. This is different. It's for the brain. And then maybe ask for a sit or down. They may not, they may only do it because they think they're gonna get to come out. So who cares? Do it 20 times and they'll be so bored and so tired, they will lay down. This is one of our favorite tunes to practice here at Puppy Academy because literally I can relax with puppy meditation. Yeah. It's incredible how valuable it is for a dog. I have watched a dog for the entirety of our program at three parts of the day, will bark for 10 minutes straight. And about halfway through the program, he, she was old enough to start doing this routine that Bethany mentioned. And I got a, I got a notice from a couple of my trainers that they haven't heard her bark for almost two weeks during that time. I just haven't really checked up on her. And it's probably from the puppy meditation and some age, some maturity coming some maturity. in as well. And probably a few, this is the next thing, is when you're home, you need to practice this with them. And you need to set them up. Maybe try a pet corrector. It squirts out air. <laughs> and you do a short one, not a long one. Maybe that can settle them down. Maybe tap the top of their crates, or not tap, but firmly, firmly tap. It says uh, you're schedule driven as well. Are you using crate when you're home? Yeah. Is that kind of what you're mentioning? I hope so. I wanted to go into schedule stuff too. Do you have anything to add to what I said before I go no, into no, schedule move stuff? No, move on, I want okay. to talk about schedule stuff. Well, well, go, oh. No, you can talk about it, I'll, I'll add to it. Okay, what I really, really want you to try, and I'm gonna be super fast, stay with me. This might not be um, as lucrative for the five month old, but definitely the one year old. The meditation patterning is so important. Like before they go in crate and they're left in crate and when you're about to take them out as long as they're not gonna pee. However, how do you work them the rest of the day? You need to, I'm sorry, but you gotta do everything. So this is what I mean by that. Do with the one year old, do 10 to 15 minutes of fast paced obedience. Like as soon as their elbows hit the ground for a down, come. As soon as they come, sit down, like, like, and do that for like a 15 minute segment and then maybe do some tug or fetch with structure. So what I mean by that is they should be able to drop it and if not, that's what you're working on. And then if I reach for the toy, if they go for the toy at the same time, I move in with body language, get out of my way, get back. So lots of structure to the fetch and the tug, but really kind of wear them out a little. So it's like 15, 15, then I might go back and I might do another five to 10 minutes of fast, hard obedience. I might throw open the front door and they think they're going for a walk and I turn and stop and sit and it's really fast paced, excuse me. And then when the dog is like, <sighs> and just like kind of a little like, whoa, that was a lot. Then you go and shift gears calm them down. There's a number of ways to do that. You could do the slow patterning for 10 to 15 minutes and then take the leash off and crate and shut the door. So do, and, and that's, um, you could do a walk first. So walk 15 minutes of the obedience, 10 to 15 play, 10 minutes obedience, 10 minutes of patterning. So you're packing in like an hour and then they go and crate for, you know, however long. Really exhaust them mentally and physically mentally mental exhaustion comes with challenges physical exhaustion is the movement and so that's of, what i would do i think of every dog as having two wells in their brain we have a physical well we have a mental well when they're born their physical well is 100 percent. they come out of the womb with high energy well maybe not i don't know but after about a week and their eyes open they're playing with their siblings their litter mates 
uh, whoever they have next to them, they have high energy. That mental well, though, I think starts at like 2%. Mm. They can only do things for a couple minutes at a time. And as they get older, 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 Goose, especially the little pity that I was mentioning, where she said for, for every month it's five minutes of walking, I use this exact reference with her. I said, if you're doing a training walk, they have significantly less than what that patient Then pulling, said. sniffing, yeah. yeah. That I could do for four hours of a walk, no problem. Mm -hmm. So to clarify that from before, that's what I was talking about when I yeah. said they can't even handle close to that. That mental well at a four month old puppy is probably only 10 or 15%. And then as you get older, maybe, maybe 20, 30%. Mm -hmm. As you get older and older, that well builds. But what you do is you deplete that mental well and that's all that's left is that physical well. So when you deplete that mental well, you need to make sure they have something stationary they can work on, like being in the house, being on a place command, which is teaching them to go to a designated area on command and stay there until we release them and from on command. And when they mess up, that's a good thing, body language to reset yes. them because that puts their brain in a, 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 a not a follower forward motion state, but a relaxed Yep. state and you can do that spatial pressure yes and you can do that with a five month old puppy yeah super super valuable so you're trying to build that mental well to get more training time out of them because when that yeah. well hits zero that's when you get zoomies jumping nipping biting at the crate you need to exhaust the mental side in order to get longer time in that yeah. crate so it's mental and physical yes. and then don't sorry this is going to be the hardest one especially for the five month old i would do this don't let them rest outside of crate for the next two weeks so it's more crate time. So unless you're working with them, walking them, um, interacting with them in some way, if they're about to pass out on their dog bed in the corner, oh no, 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 <laughs> you're going to, to crate. Don't let them rest outside of crate. Prove to them that they can sleep soundly in crate. That's the other hard Very part. Very likely what's happening is when you leave the house, that's when they want to be out of the crate. That's when they want to play. That's when they want to do things. Yeah. That's because when you put them in the crate, they're probably not learning to rest in there. They're only coming out to rest. Yeah. I know dogs that will bark in the crate for three, four hours straight. We have one right now. And the minute he comes out, he's like, <laughs> passes out on the floor. And yep. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. We know it's tough. We know. It we is. know. It's incredibly yeah. tough. And, and you have breeds, two breeds that are specifically bred to not handle confinement. <laughs> not in a yard, not in a crate, not in a house. <laughs> Wine Reiner better be on that breed list. Sure. Yeah, okay. they're, they're just like anxious though. I, I kind of consider Huskies to be more like primal roamers. You know, it's a little different reason why they're both like that. I but think yeah. wine and Huskies are two of the hardest crate yeah. training dogs I've ever had. I'm going to add German Shepherds too though. I'm going to say three. I've talked to some breeders before mm -hmm. um, that just breed GSPs, just po like pointers. And, mm -hmm. and apparently it's just a lot of hunting dogs. They're just like, put yeah. me in a kennel, a big kennel, not a crate. These are drive drive driven dogs yeah to they seek take a while yeah to seek, they take yeah. a while to crate train so okay good luck check back <laughs> in with us next week please please check back in yeah us. we do appreciate checking so it makes it helps us know whether we're helping you and helping other people as well we want to help you okay so we got a video it says interrupting excitement by bringing a treat to their nose but don't give it yet somebody said okay jessica says okay but how do you get the puppy to not be going crazy with the leash to focus on the treats don't pull the leash if your puppy is biting the leash you're probably pulling and putting tension on it or they'd rather play or they feel like they need to consume something like need at something rather than focus on food so just let them drag it or when you're holding it make sure there's no tension on it it's just there so they don't go rogue under the couch and not come out and you know and you don't have a leash on we them we do a lot of lessons with owners and the most common leash practice is food to those puppy come puppy come 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 and that arm is moving stop moving your arm you're you're making a judgment call about her you don't know if she's doing that i just worked with four owners yesterday and every arm was up here doing this <laughs> waving like the flag yeah just be and and for now maybe just drop it on the floor so you can step on it if your puppy goes rogue under the computer desk or, or I'm something making like a that assumption though if yeah. your arm doesn't oh, he's do that, right. i apologize he's right. now yeah. <laughs> okay um how will your puppy oh this is another video how will you know when your puppy will always sleep through the night um that was a video that we did and uh feliciano i'm sure i got that wrong i apologize i will be bringing home too many golden doodles in four weeks from the same litter i can't find i can't find information on training two puppies at once 
doesn't exist. Are all these schools that you do in their own? Like, girl, you've got to go to the online school. Right. We have an online school, and you go to the a puppyacademy.com, the puppyacademy.com, and click on online, see if you like the look of it, and it will help you, and you get one on one time with us. Every if, Wednesday, 4 p.m. Pacific time. You can also email, hour. you can also email questions if you, if you can't make it, because here's the thing. Every bit of research you're going to find on adopting two puppies, especially from the same litter, gonna is going to say syndrome. don't do it because of litter mate syndrome. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Go Google litter mate syndrome and come back. <laughs> okay. Check the return. No, I'm just going to um, All right. It's not there. Summer Johnson says, my pup Yellow Lab will do air chomps to get my attention. He does bite the kids while trying to play. They hate it. Any advice? I don't have the age, but all I needed to hear was yellow lab. The air chumps, I think, are hilarious looking until I own the puppy. Yeah. Get a leash on this puppy all the time. And anytime this puppy is out of crate, you also need to have your food pouch on you. You need to be working with the puppy anytime that the puppy is out and teaching the kids how to be more neutral just for now when the puppy is around. Minimize play with the kids, yep. maximize training. Kids who play with the puppy and the puppy is biting them specifically, it means that they're not leaders to this puppy, they're litter mates to this puppy. You have yeah. litter mate syndrome for me. And this, this puppy's gotta be on a leash. That's not just because your puppy is behaving badly. That is every puppy. You need to start redirecting this puppy, working on some basic obedience. Um, do you have anything follow up to that? No. There's one last Online question. Online school. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah, I definitely <laughs> our online school. It will help, I promise you. Um, I would like real quick, I'm going to briefly mention this question just because we're not going to go in depth in it, but I don't want you to think we ignored you. Beautiful face. Call, stop it. That's him. Colleen said, um, do you recommend bark collars or e-collars? Uh, I know it can be really controversial. We're training a service dog. The barking is the worst. I went to a pet store. Don't buy e-collars at a pet store. Um, uh, for on her, uh, let's see, I wanted to know what it felt like before considering getting one. Okay, well, that's cool. That's cool. I um, mean, it's like a, a, the good ones are like a tens unit, they're not super sharp, but bark collars are different. Bark collars are sharp. So, okay, here's the thing it is our personal opinion that anytime you're going to use a bark collar, an e collar, any a remote collar, an electric fence, anything, you need to get one on one training. Personally, in my, in my personal opinion, bark collars and electric fences, you could do Zooms with a trainer who's really knowledgeable on those things. You could do a Zoom or two, you'd be good. If you decide to do a remote collar, that is a totally different can of worms and you need to get so much nuance. several one-on-ones with a trainer at home. We're not against them, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna really go into them here. It's, it's a very unique communication to be able to use that does work on a lot of dogs in some ways, but it's all in how you use them. So get, you know, get some one-on-one help. One of the help. easiest ways to script your puppy is to not hire a professional dog trainer who specializes in e-collars and try to introduce it yourself. Uh, There's so much nuance. Actually, you know, let me just follow up with that. That yeah, if you're talking about a puppy puppy, it, it might under be six months of age. Under, it might, might be uh, totally different. We actually don't advise that. So that's just our personal opinion. So um, service animals. So I'm assuming about a year older. Old. Yeah, if it's a, it's an older adolescent dog. Two year old. I don't. She said it was a friend of hers or something. I don't. know. Anyway, get that one on one help that that you that you need. Uh, look for a behavioral modification trainer who specializes in e collars. Bingo. All right, guys. Same place, same time next week. Thank you. Bye. Awkward smile. Awkward smile. Oh, <laughs>